Hello beautiful people, my name is Amanda Zitto. I normally like travel vlogs, how to's, and general encouragement for you to get out and do the thing. In my last video, I gave you a few tips to find budget-friendly camping gear. I mentioned at the end of that video, the best way to stretch your hard-earned cash is to protect your investment. So today I'm gonna go over a couple basic tips on how to store your gear when you're not using it. For those of us who aren't on the road full time, our gear spends a good half of its life stored away in a garage, if not 80% of its life. So how you choose to store that gear has a huge impact on the longevity of its life and how long you get to enjoy it. I am gonna pause here and mention that all the following tips are just generic, general guidelines. You can take them with a grain of salt based on your needs. Not everybody has a garage. Not everybody has enough closet space to store everything in a controlled temperature. However, I also highly recommend you look up the recommended storage guidelines by the manufacturer of your gear. Oftentimes they'll have a little section of it on their website or even a tag that comes with the product that tells you how to store it properly so that you're not damaging it in the long term. I'm also gonna be leaving a ton of resources down in the description that go into way more detail about how to store your gear when you're not using it and how to maintain it than I could possibly cover in just one video. Okay, with that out of the way, let's start. You know those silica gel packets that you get when you buy a new pair of shoes or in a lot of other gear? Don't throw them away, keep them. Put them in the bins and totes and areas where you're storing your gear to help absorb any excess moisture that may or may not lead to mold in the future. <laughs> I also recommend sorting your gear into like piles. Put kitchenware together, sleep systems together, and luggage together. If you can, keep your gear in a place where it's not gonna be exposed to extreme temperatures. The seam sealant on rainflies is especially susceptible to extreme temperature fluctuations and can start to crack and deteriorate over time when exposed to these kinds of temperature fluctuations. If you do notice some cracking and flaking on the inside of your rainfly, you need to remove it and reapply a seam sealer to keep the outside of your tent waterproof. <laughs> Make sure that you dry out your tent. If you can't do that at camp, do it as soon as you possibly can. Even if that means waiting until you get home to hang it in the garage or in your backyard or even near a window to allow the tent to dry out before you store it. While we're on the subject of tents, it is also in your best interest to keep your tent clean. If you come home from a trip and your tent is covered in dirt or sand or in worst case scenarios covered in sap and bird droppings, it is worth it for the longevity of your tent to shake it out, make sure you get as much dirt out of it as possible and potentially spot clean it with a mild non-detergent soap in areas where sap or bird droppings or other disgusting things may have attached themselves to your tent. In the case that your tent is covered in sap, allow the sap to dry completely before you try to clean it and gently spot clean it with mineral oil or other alcohol-based cleaners such as hand sanitizer. Make sure that you rinse that area very thoroughly with cold water and allow it to dry completely before you store the tent. It is recommended by most manufacturers to store your tent loosely in a cool, dry place. If you can, place your tent in an old pillowcase or a loose mesh bag. This will allow the fabric of the tent to relax and breathe, which means that it's less likely to smell like a science experiment the next time you pull it out. Hint, I keep silica packets and a stuff sack for my sleeping bag and my tent for a reason. <laughs> I will emphasize here for those who do not go camping often or are new to camping, do not fold your tent up when you put it back in the stuff sack. Your best option is to literally stuff it back in the bag. That way, at no point are you reinforcing creases that could damage the waterproofing of your tent. Store your sleeping bag in a large, breathable sack or hang it in your closet. If you store a sleeping bag all compressed in its stuff sack, like this, you will slowly damage the insulation over time and it will no longer loft like it's supposed to. If you take out your sleeping bag and use it for the first time that season and you notice that it's not as warm as it used to be, that's probably part of your problem. <laughs> I am going to re-emphasize here that it is pretty important that you don't store your expensive down sleeping bag in any areas that's going to be exposed to heavy temperature, humidity fluctuations, like damp basements, garages, car trunks, sheds. <laughs> Those kinds of fluctuations will cause moisture buildup, 
which no matter how dry it was when you stored the sleeping bag, will find its way into the down and damage your sleeping bag, if not create mold. Let's avoid that, shall we? <laughs> if you wouldn't store your pillow there, maybe don't leave your sleeping bag there. <laughs> Even if you think that you cleaned it at camp, clean your cooking gear when you get home. A lot of the food that we make at camp can be really salty and cleaning it again once you get home can prevent a lot of rusting. It also means that you can wash anything that you may have missed while you were cleaning it at camp, uh, which will prevent things from growing once they get a chance to sit for a while. This also goes for your cooler. Make sure that you clean it with soap and water once you get home since they are pretty prone to terrible odors if left by themselves. Yes, even if you think, well, I only had ice in it, it will still smell terrible. Clean it with soap and water when you get home. <laughs> Also, if you carry a hydration bladder like me, make sure that if you're not using it every single day, that you empty it, wash it, and dry it thoroughly so that you can prevent mold from growing. Chances are, if the water starts to taste kind of funky, even when you are on the road, you probably should wash your hydration bladder. <laughs> Get a footprint to protect the bottom of your tent. A lot of people say that these are a waste of space and that it's a waste of money, but if you've ever tried to clean sap off the fabric of your tent, or if you spent a lot of money on your tent and you wanna stretch the life out as long as you can, worth it. If you don't wanna spend the extra money to buy a footprint that's specifically designed for your tent, because they can be a bit pricey, I recommend buying a cheap nylon tarp or a nylon fly sheet and cutting it down to the size of your tent. Alternatively, you can also get a sheet of Tyvek, which is normally used on construction sites, and cut that down to the size of your tent too. My last basic tip for you today is to always carry tenacious tape. Seriously, just throw it in your first aid kit. Think about it like first aid for your camping gear. If anything rips or tears, this will patch sleeping pads, sleeping bags, tent bathtub floors, tent rain flies, down jackets. Seriously. If you do get a rip or a tear in your sleeping bag or your down jacket and you start to see feathers, clean it and patch it right away so that you minimize the loss of down. <laughs> Every feather is precious and contributes to the warmth factor. <laughs> All right, beautiful people, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it. I also need to give a huge, huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon. These videos would not be possible without you. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel for as little as $1 a month, you can get early access to videos like these ad-free over on my Patreon, links down in the description. If that's not up your alley, I also have t-shirts, stickers, prints, and all the good things for my motorcycle art on them over on my Rebelable and my Etsy shop. T-shirts like this one. <laughs> links to those are also down in the description. If you can't support me monetarily right now, I 100% understand. I appreciate you guys just for being here and watching these videos every week. Also for my end screen crew, make sure that you leave down in the comments if you have any other tips for making your gear last longer. I'll see you guys later.